Hi, my name is Todd Horton and I'm here to talk about how survey grade GPS works. Your cell phone, the GPS in your car, and recreational GPS units use what we call autonomous positioning. You may recall that the word autonomous means acting alone. So in autonomous positioning, your receiver is acting alone and the signals it receives from multiple satellites are subject to the ionospheric errors that we talked about before. So these signals as they pass through the ionosphere are degraded and delayed and therefore the error in your position is subject to the induced errors by the ionosphere. The ionospheric error is the largest source of positioning error in GNSS positioning. In order to eliminate that error to a large extent we use differential positioning. This requires simultaneous observation with two receivers. Let me give you an analogy I think you can understand. Let's go back to your understanding of algebra. If I have an expression that says a plus e equals b plus e you can see we can simplify that expression by canceling e out of both sides giving us an expression that says a equals b. The simultaneous observation acts as if we have a big equal sign somewhere between the receivers. At each receiver we have received data from identical satellites. You see each satellite is broadcasting its data in all directions. Therefore both receivers can get data from the same satellite or set of satellites at the same time. Thus if we call this satellite 1 at the receiver we see on the left we're going to get a certain ionospheric error there and from the same receiver we are likely to get a, a very, very similar ionospheric error at the other receiver. Well, as a result, we end up with the ability to cancel out the errors. We've detected the error in two places. Therefore, now we can identify what that is and make it cancel. This is a simplified example, but I think you get the concept. As a result, we end up with a precise vector between the two. That is, we have the difference in position between the two points. I want you to consider that the signal path from the satellite to each receiver is really very close to parallel lines. I have not drawn this to scale clearly, but when the satellite is 20,000 kilometers away and these two receivers on the ground are only 10 kilometers apart, about 6.1 miles, then these lines would, would be nearly parallel and the signals are passing through the same little slice of the ionosphere. Thus, we can reasonably accept that the ionospheric error in both signal paths is similar. However, the ionosphere is not uniform. As the two receivers get farther apart, then the ionospheric errors over here are going to be different from what they were over on the left side of the figure. Real-time kinematic positioning, otherwise known as RTK for real-time kinematic positioning, gives us results in real-time. It is instant and kinematic means moving. So while we're moving, we can get instant positions. Well, how do we do this? Again, we're using two receivers. 
usually we have one sitting on a known point and the other sitting on an unknown point and the one that moves around we call the rover. The base is the receiver that sits still on a known point. There are a couple things going on here. The base is not only receiving data from the satellites, it is also packaging that up and rebroadcasting that as what we call the RTK message. We can do this via radio, a little radio transmitter, or we can do it with uh, a cellular phone link and the internet. We send this data in all directions as the RTK message and the rover then is also receiving data from the very same satellites because it's simultaneous observation. So it combines the GPS data and the RTK message and the software in your rover computes the precise vector from the base to the rover. Once again, this is a differential position. We get a difference in position that can be expressed as a direction and distance. Positional error with RTK increases with distance from the base. That is, the farther you get from the base, the larger the error is. RTK positional error increases with distance from the base. This is true when you are using only two receivers, a base and a rover. In the case of network RTK, where you are using multiple base stations, you will have a different error pattern. That will be the subject of another video. Here's an example of how we express that growing error, and this is excerpted from the Trimble R8 accuracy specs available online. And for kinematic surveying, the horizontal accuracy is expressed with a constant error and a scalar error. And RMS stands for root mean square. This is the same type of error specification we see uh, the, the same format we see for electronic distance measuring instruments. When we talk about the vector, we're talking about that line from the base to the rover. The constant error is the error you can expect in any measurement, any position that you collect with GPS or GNSS technology will have this type of constant error. That is, this is the radius of a circle inside which the truth is likely to fall. The part one part per million is what we call the scalar error and that is the distance dependent component. If you have an RTK vector that's one kilometer long you can expect one millimeter. That is there are one million millimeters in one kilometer. So one part per million is one millimeter per kilometer. Or if you like to work in feet and miles, that's a half of a hundredth of a foot per mile. So then let's look at this, the, the, uh, the net effect of this by applying our constant error and our scalar error. They don't merely add up. We use a simple statistical uh, model that we call the error of a sum, error of a sum, and when we square each error, take the sum of those squares and take the square root of that, we get this distance error, and we have listed it over here. Notice that at one mile, the scalar error really has no effect, and even at two miles, the effect is very small. It starts to show up at four miles, but when you get out to eight miles, now it starts to become significant. Beyond 16 miles, you, uh, for survey grade work, for certain types of survey grade work, this may not be acceptable errors.
we said that we typically set up the base unit at a point of known position. Well, that's a generalization. Really, the base can occupy a point of known position, or it may be an unknown point. But you see, we can assume a coordinate, just as we have in the survey world for many years. Prior to the GPS age, we commonly would use a, an assumed coordinate for the simplicity of our calculations, maybe northing 5,000, easting 5,000. We can still do the same thing with GNSS technology. The good news about RTK GNSS technology is the accuracy that we depend on is relative. That is, the accuracy of each point measured with the rover relative to the base is going to be very good, or we can say the error is small. So whether the base unit is here, or here, or here, or here, the relative figure of all of these points that is relative to the base is still pretty good and accurate. Let's say this another way. Absolute accuracy would be the accuracy with which we know a position relative to the Earth. Maybe we're expressing this in some uh, datum or map projection with some coordinate system. We could have a point whose absolute accuracy is known to plus or minus five feet. With RTK methods, we can measure with a good relative accuracy, but the relative accuracy doesn't make the absolute accuracy of our derived points any better than what we started from. We could say that this would be poor absolute accuracy, but good relative accuracy. Another way of thinking of it is, let's imagine the blue arrow here is a yardstick. You know the relative positions of the yardstick ends, they're three feet apart. But where is the yardstick on the face of the Earth? We may not know. We could have poor absolute accuracy relative to the Earth, but good relative accuracy within the figure concerned. If we start from a point of good absolute accuracy and then apply good relative accuracy, our new point is not going to be any better than our starting point, but we get a result that is built upon the absolute accuracy combined with the relative accuracy. In this case, we have both good absolute accuracy and good relative accuracy. The great thing about real-time kinematic methods, or for that matter, differential GPS, is we get good relative accuracy. And with GPS, we can get good absolute accuracy. Differential positions, as we said, require simultaneous observations. That is, two receivers listening to the same satellites and collecting data from those satellites at the very same time. The thing that makes differential positioning possible with instant results is the thing we call the RTK message that carries the GNSS data from the base receiver to the rover in real time where the rover computes the vector from the base receiver. An RTK survey accuracy degrades with distance from the base, that is, the error increases, and you saw that that depends on constant error and scalar error, and we use the error of a sum to combine those for the net effect. I appreciate your attention, and if there are things about this video series that you would like to have clarified or you think can be improved, I would love to hear from you. Thank you for watching.